what can I do when I just want to give up on sex and intimacy in my marriage? I feel like I've tried everything and I'm just tired of trying. Sex is hard. A healthy sex life is difficult, honestly, because it is a very holy act and the devil hates that you and your husband engage in sex. But if we give in to that feeling of despair, we are playing right into the devil's hands. Welcome to Charting Toward Intimacy, the Catholic sex and intimacy podcast for women. My name is Ellen Holloway, and I am a Catholic speaker and coach who specializes in sex and marital intimacy. And I am on a mission to help you expand your understanding of the beauty of sexual intimacy and grow in holiness through the gift of your body. And with me today, I have Kathleen Shavanis, our semi-regular co-host, who is a natural family planning advocate and femme instructor. And look, we've all been there in feeling despair at some aspect of our sex life. And maybe you've given up before. I know I personally gave up only a short time into my own marriage. By the grace of God, my husband didn't. And look where we are today. I host a podcast about sex and intimacy. All right. Hey, Kathleen. Hello. How's it going, Ellen? We are doing well. This episode's coming out on Gaudete Sunday, and we were just reflecting on our Gaudete topic Monday, choice. really. Oh, well, yeah, I guess that's right. <laughs> <laughs> We don't put episodes out on Sunday. We were just reflecting on the topic choice of this, like, despair, this kind of opposite. <laughs> of Gaudete, which is Gaudete. joy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but I think, I mean... I, I think it kind of fits because we're just really going to be digging into like to not despair, right? And even to find joy in in the despair, like it, in the hard. How to manage despair, I think. Yeah, managing despair. You know, I like almost that a lot. like managing despair yeah. so that you don't stay in despair. So let's talk a little bit about where this is coming from. I I hear from a lot of you guys either in like one-on-one coaching or just um, when you reach out to me on Instagram and share some of your story or send me an email. And I feel like lately I've seen a lot of despair Mm -hmm. of I've been trying to make things better in my relationship. I've been listening to your podcast and, and hearing the things that you suggest and I've been trying them and it's just not working. And Things are still bad, and I just, I just want to give up. I just want sex to. I just, I don't even want to try anymore mm-hmm. because it doesn't feel like it is ever going to get better. Yeah, and I, I just want to like, I just want to honor that for a minute. That if you feel like that. You're not alone. I mean, truly. <laughs> I hear I hear this from a lot of you guys. And I know there's a lot of you who don't necessarily reach out to me. Yeah. That that despair feeling. What we're going to really just kind of talk about in this episode is is not allowing that despair to overwhelm everything. Yeah. And just how to really Right, manage that. I li- I like what you said, Kathleen. Manage, yeah, that despair. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think. Um, I mean, I'll say it. Like, I am currently in a place of despair, and you know, it's a hard place to be because, and it's it's almost weird because you don't really know, <clears throat> like, what it is that's keeping you there. Mm-hmm. Like, you might know where you should be and you might know where you want to be but like there's something that's just like when you're when you're in this despairing place you're just like I just want to stop trying like I I am too exhausted to try anymore you know and Mm -hmm. you know it's not ideal you know it's not the right response but it's really really hard to get out of that Here's the first thing I will say, that if you're someone like me who sometimes gets to this place, the first thing that... I would argue, sorry to interrupt you, I would argue that I I think all of us, even if we have a fantastic sex life, there there are 
moments of despair. I think I think some couples kind of have like longer periods of despair and some couples have kind of shorter sure. periods of despair. Yeah. But I, I would argue that very likely like every couple is at least going to go through a couple of kind of seasons of despair. Yeah. No, I think you're absolutely right. And I want to say that the one thing I noticed in the last couple months for us, so leading up, we were in a place of like peace for, it felt like a record amount of time, right? Like we were in (laughs) like a really good place of peace for a while. And it was just like, praise God, like maybe we finally got this figured out, you know? What I noticed was when we started coming out of our places, our, our, our time of peace was that we um, have been doing more vocations talks lately. Mm. When you end up in this place of despair, I think it's really important to take a look at what you're doing as a couple, because I think that a lot of the times this despair comes from when you're trying to do the right things. And it's like, well, why would that be? Like, that doesn't make any sense. But it's because marriage is under massive attack Mm -hmm. by the devil. And when you are, he's not going to stop you necessarily. Like, think of how cunning and conniving he is. He's not necessarily going to stop you from doing vocations talks, right? From like, from evangelizing in some way through your, from being fruitful in your marriage, right? But what he is going to do is when you're on your way to that, he's going to try, try to drive something between you. Mm-hmm. And so we had done um, a few weeks ago, there was this one parish just doing this whole faith for me, like family faith formation. Um, so the parents get talked to as well as the kids having like catechesis lessons. And so we had done that and it was like sort of a parenting perspective and that was the first time I noticed that we were kind of coming out of our place of peace was when we were like heading to do these these talks. And I was like starting to feel resentful of my husband for like something completely different. And when you're going to do a talk together, right? Like you kind of want to feel unified. <laughs> and now, same thing, we're doing a different vocations talk tomorrow And we're in this, we've been in this place for probably like a close to a week of just like, nah, maybe not totally a week, but a few days, right? Of just like, yeah, we're like off, we're we're not on the same page again. So I think that's something really important to, to pay attention to. That when you start feeling even just like resentful of your spouse, resentful of sex in general, resentful of your sex life whatever it is um, that's putting you in that place of despair, what are you doing that the devil doesn't like? Mm -hmm. And that might just be being married. Like, yeah, you know, Kathleen's talking about public ministry, which, you know, she and I both have experienced attack Mm -hmm. in different ways because of our public ministry, because of this podcast, (laughs) you know, but even if you have no public ministry at all, if you are living a Christian marriage and bringing life into this world, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. The yeah. devil hates it. He hates yep. it. And I, I love what you said, Kathleen, because that is so important for us to remember mm-hmm. as married couples that our marriage is under attack. Absolutely yeah. under attack. And so when things feel hard, you know, going back to kind of the, right, the joy of Gaudete Sunday and and this third week of Advent, we can find joy in the fact that we're struggling through a season of despair Mm -hmm. because we know, we know a couple of truths. One, we know that God loves us so beyond our imagining. Yeah. And that he loves our marriage. We know that through the, the sacrament of matrimony, God is just pouring graces on our marriage. Yeah. And he is never going to allow something, you know, that we cannot handle with, with his help, right? And we know the truth 
that the devil's doing everything he can to separate our marriages. Yeah. To, to separate the spouses, right? And so I think in these seasons, it's really important to turn back to prayer and, and remember that God is pouring those graces on our marriage. Um, you know, I, I think sometimes, a lot of times we will have this prayer, or I feel like I hear this a lot, of like, God, give me the grace to, to handle this. God, give me, the, give me the grace. God has already given you the grace. He yeah. is just, he has showered that grace on you. Like the prayer, I, I feel like a more honest prayer would be like, God, help me to use the grace yeah, <laughs> that you've absolutely. already given me. Like, help me to like, help me to soften my heart to like allow that grace to pour into my heart. Help me to open, yeah. open these, these doors I have shut to allow this grace. A, a, a piece of wisdom I got several years ago, which really bothered me when I got it, but I have since really just found the truth in it is that seasons of despair will always lead always lead to seasons of hope and peace and seasons of hope and peace will always this is the part that bothered me will Mm -hmm. always lead to seasons of despair yeah and that's so true It, it there's so much truth in that that like our lives as humans have this cyclical nature to it. I mean, look at your own prayer life. Look at your own faith journey. You have Mm -hmm. had seasons where going to mass is just dumb and a checkbox. And you have had seasons where going to mass has been fruitful and beautiful. You've had seasons where prayer is just a checkbox and it feels very dry. And you've had seasons where prayer is really incredible. Now look at your marriage. You have had seasons where your marriage is hard and rocky and you just feel like you are digging yourself out of a pit. And then you've had seasons that have been joyful and peaceful and and dare I say easy, right? And and there is this cyclical nature to it. And so when you are feeling like in the depths of that pit, yeah, you can trust in the fact that you won't stay there. As long as you hold fast to God, right? Remember that splitting up is not an option, right? Right, yeah. Because that's Literally. what the devil wants. He wants mm-hmm. the split. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying, I, I don't mean to sound quite so disastrous, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, th- I think many of us who would listen to a podcast like this, you know, divorce is not an option. But even just remembering that giving into despair is not mm-hmm. an option. Right. I think this is something I hear a lot too of just like this it's I've tried so hard. I'm just I just don't want sex to be a thing anymore. I'm just I'm done. I'm done trying. I'm done trying to <laughs> tell my husband how to how to give me pleasure. I'm done trying to do what he wants because I he just doesn't he's not listening to me. He's not understanding what I want. I'm I'm done trying to actually communicate about sex because it seems like my spouse doesn't ever want to talk about it. I'm, I'm done trying to do X, Y, Z. Yeah. It's okay to feel that way, but, (laughs) but it's not okay to act that way. I guess (laughs) it's okay. If you need to pause, that is okay. There Mm -hmm. is no problem, but make sure you give yourself like a, like a deadline, right? Okay, that's fine. Pause for a month. G- give yeah. yourself a rest, right? That's okay. But you you have to pick it back up. You have to keep fighting for your marriage. You have to keep fighting for your sex life. Your sex life is so, so good. Did you know that like Jesus and Mary are just dancing and celebrating when you and your husband have sex? There's no embarrassment. There is no like closed doors like they are just so happy that you and your husband are uniting in this beautiful way that images God that images the divine trinitarian love and that just like opens up to each other and and you become a gift to each other like there is just so much happiness and joy in that even when it's hard even when it's like not a good like session you know you sometimes yeah. you get out of those right even if you don't orgasm even if even okay i'm gonna say this but with a caveat even if there's pain 
it's still good. Now, my caveat is if you have pain with sex, please stop and like talk to me. I'll give you resources. Like you should not push through pain. But (laughs) just because you experience pain doesn't mean that sex is somehow bad. Yeah. Like there is still such goodness to it. There is still celebration in heaven at your sex life. And maybe you're rolling your eyes at Ellen right now. (laughs) Because maybe you're like, yeah, Ellen, I got to be honest. I am really sick of all of this flowery sex talk because that is not my lived experience, right? Like, I would rather you just shut shut your mouth right now. Yeah, I'm going to turn this podcast episode and off. I don't want to listen honestly, to the second half. maybe that's where you are. I'm, I might be like half there right now. <laughs> but I love Ellen, so I'm not going to tell her to shut up. <laughs> but, good thing. But also, in my current, like season of despair that I'm finding myself in, um, I've really been reflecting on my need to get back into therapy and counseling. Mm. And it's really been kind of highlighting that for me. And I want to challenge you that if you, if that was your reaction to Ellen right now, like I am really sick of this. I don't want to hear all this good flowery talk because I can't relate to it. I want to challenge you to maybe consider the same. Maybe you've been in therapy before and haven't found it helpful. Maybe it's time to find someone new. Maybe you haven't been before because you're just kind of like, no, I can't benefit from that. Maybe you could. I know that I can. I have been before. I haven't quite found someone that I has, has I've really connected with well. So for me, it's time to find someone new. But I think that's a really important thing. We have a lot of emotional hangups around sex. Mm -hmm. And yeah, what Ellen's talking about might be annoying right now, but it's the reality of sex. And Mm -hmm. just because we can't relate to it doesn't mean, doesn't change its validity, right? Like it, that, ooh, you know what? I need, I need like a shirt with it on it. Just make sure my name is below it, okay? Right. Make sure I get full Can't credit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, just like, I just want to highlight that, like, even if we can't relate to it, this applies to every teaching of the yeah. Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. Even if we can't relate to it, that doesn't, you know, change its truth. That doesn't change its validity. Like, right. It is yeah. still the truth. Yeah. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. So, I mean... And what that should do is like, okay, well, if that's true, but that's not what I'm experiencing and that's not what I'm relating to, that's not how I'm relating to this, that tells us that there's some interior work that needs to be done. Maybe it's mental, maybe it's spiritual, maybe it's both. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm saying therapy, but also be open to spiritual direction if you can find someone, maybe maybe you need one, maybe you need the other, or maybe you need both. Um, that's something to bring to prayer. But and and to realize what your hangups are. Are your hangups mental from maybe like trauma or something, or trust issues maybe? Or is your hang up spiritual where maybe you really had a hard time seeing sex as a good from from an earlier age? I'm going to insert a caveat here because I recently just listened to a podcast where I heard the damage of some secular therapy for Catholics. Yeah, I was going to I was going to caveat <clears throat> yes. and then and then also just remind everyone of the coaching yeah. that I do, which Exactly. I, so I I co you know, the, this is what I do. <laughs> yeah, I have a one-on-one coaching program to you know, work through issues with sex and intimacy. And I have clients that it's been very helpful to do one-on-one coaching with me alongside of secular therapy mm-hmm. to continue to be reminded of like the, the truths of our faith alongside really, cause I am not a counselor, right? but I, I'm a coach. I can really coach you through a lot of issues and, and help you work through from an authentically Catholic foundation of, you know, 
I'll give you exercises. I'll give you, I'll give you homework, right? I'll give you conversations to have with your husband um, and just really dig in from that faith foundation, as well as like my experience with, you know, just the fundamentals of sex therapy in my certificate that I hold. And so again, I'm not a therapist, but that can also be a really helpful avenue. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And the one thing um, that I want to say is just to be to be careful about talking about issues of sex to a secular person only. I think that it always needs to be balanced out because I think a lot of the times, like it can kind of come back to, well, your religion, you know, has suppressed and you're, you know, and and I think it's really important just to be able to if you're working on, you know, issues of sexuality to always have a Catholic voice to bounce that off of, whether it be a Catholic therapist specifically, I mean, that's the ideal, but you Mm -hmm. know, they're not, they're not everywhere. Or if you are going to secular therapy to couple that with spiritual direction or Ellen's coaching or, you know, someone to give you a Catholic frame to bounce off those secular ideas. Because that is a really, it's it's a really careful balance that needs to happen sometimes. I also want to just like kind of throw out, sometimes this happens a lot with Catholic therapists, Catholic doctors. It's like they have the, the label, they call themselves like Catholic right. therapist, Catholic doctor, you know, um, but they don't necessarily really believe or teach or hold themselves accountable to the church teaching. So I'm right. just kind of keeping that in mind too, um, as well as keeping in mind that therapists are not necessarily informed about like sex and sex therapy itself. That is a completely true, yeah. separate certification, which is why I pursued a certificate in sex therapy to be able to kind of support Um, my coaching clients um, in that more practical sexology side of things. So anyway, that's really kind of a long. Yeah, it is. But it's an important point that needed to be made and probably extrapolated to the degree that we did. (laughs) (laughs) Otherwise, the Lord would not have led us to do so. Yeah, right. (laughs) That wasn't exactly where we had planned this conversation. Yeah, exactly. But I think, you know, in, in the last few minutes that we have, I just want to turn back to joy and hope. Mm-hmm. And you're rolling your eyes, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not my experience. Or I guess I, I want to turn back to just, just do not give in to the despair. Because that's exactly what the devil wants. Yeah. Is he, he wants you to feel like there's no way out. He wants you to feel like the only thing to do is just give in to the despair. I'm I'm done trying. I've t- I've given my I've given my spouse a bunch of episodes of yours to listen to, and they never have. Mm-hmm. I I bought one of your courses, and he didn't listen to me. I tried I tried the thing. Don't just please don't give in to despair. Continue to fight for your marriage continue to fight for the the good because seasons of despair will they will lead to seasons of peace and hope yeah. you can know that truth um and i think even i think sometimes in in a season of despair it's that that's almost enough to kind of like right, yeah. even even get us out of that season of despair is like just knowing that it's not going to be forever yeah or at least kind of enough to help us push through, continue yeah. on. Yeah. But cling that. cling to God. Cling to the sacraments. We we've said this a lot in podcast episodes before. You know, attend mass together. Go to confession together. I mean, obviously, like that's an individual, you know, one after the other. No. Right. Yeah. Can't yeah, go yeah, to yeah. confession together. Yeah. <laughs> but go to confession. There, Oh, there's so many graces in the sacrament of compassion. But yeah, receive the Eucharist, go to confession, and and pray. Pray together. Yeah. Amen. I like that you use the word cling. That's that's all. It's like clinging. That's what we need to do. Because it's honestly, like, 
it's the only thing you can do. It's almost like saying, Lord, to who else shall I go? You know, like when we, um, when we are in these times, it's like, what else should I do? Where else should I go? You know? Mm. Yeah. Cling away, friends. Thanks so much for listening. If you are not already following us on Instagram, be sure to check us out at Charting Toward Intimacy. And if you listen to podcasts on a platform that gives you the option to rate or review, we'd love for you to do that because it helps us spread the word about the podcast. If you ever have questions, comments, or episode topic ideas, please reach out to us. We love to hear from you. You can reach out on Instagram or send us an email. Our email is in the show notes. Until next time. Thank you.